Am I the a hole for naming my son after my late brother when my dad had already asked me not to? My older brother died at the age of 17. He and I were very close. We went through a lot together. Our mom got sick and died after we had to watch her fade away slowly. Then our dad announced he was dating four months later. And within six months of announcing this, he moved his then-girlfriend, now wife, in and moved her kids in as well. It was a lot for us. My brother had not taken dad's moving on and moving the kids in well. He did not like our dad's wife or her kids. And in the three years we all lived together before he died, a lot of feelings were hurt. And a lot of things were said that left their mark. Then my brother died in an accident. His death symbolized the death of my family in so many ways. Mom's was the first to do that, and then his. A lot of weird feelings are present with my dad's wife and her kids because of how he hated them. And my dad has mixed feelings there also. When my husband and I found out we were expecting, the first thing we figured was an honor to him would be amazing. My dad jumped in when he found out we were having a boy and asked me not to. He said my brother hurt a lot of people before he died, and there was going to be a sort of bitter feeling if I named their grandson and nephew after someone who treated them badly. He told me it would be hard for him too, given that when my brother passed, he was in big trouble for saying some stuff to his wife in front of her kids. And that while he loved my brother, he also knew that my brother is a point of pain for his stepkids. I chose to use the name anyway. I'm not very close to my dad or his family, so in the end, their feelings were not enough for me to bypass honoring my beloved brother. But now, I am getting grief for my dad and his wife. They accused me of being insensitive and deliberately awful to her kids who love me and see me as a sister, and would so love to be aunts and uncles to my son, but who will have to be reminded of a person who made his hate clear. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. I was named after my late aunt. Based on some comments on this thread, I lived my whole life in her shadow, and I'm nothing more than a living memorial. Your dad and stepmom feel guilty because they try to force a new family less than six months after the death of your mother, and unsurprisingly, your brother wanted nothing to do with. Blaming a deceased 17-year-old kid for your own mistakes is vile, not the whole. I'm named after 10 women from both sides of my family. I cast my own shadow, not the whole OP. If they add no value to your life, why are they in it? Not the whole. You can name your child whatever you want to. By the sounds of things, you're not as close to your dad, stepmom, and step siblings as you were to your brother. Did your dad ever get you or your brother therapy for everything that went down? He did, just after my brother turned 16, and he realized things weren't just going to fall together the way he wanted. Not the whole. Your dad failed your brother as a father. That is, ultimately, what you are reminding him of. Your stepmother also failed him. Children in blended families often have anger issues and undergo a lot of emotional turmoil. This is doubly true for children who have lost a parent. Your father didn't help your brother navigate these life changes and placed all the blame for his issues resulting from these life changes on his child. And now doesn't want to be reminded of that fact by a surviving child. What a waste of air. And on top of that, dad and stepmom are using the excuse of but think of the step-sibs to justify their own negative feelings. Have the step-sibs said anything for themselves? If not, this can be fully ignored. Celebrate your love for your brother by being the parents he didn't have after your mother passed. What better tribute could there be? Not directly about my son being named after my brother, but they have talked about how much it hurts them to see me love him and hear me talk about him because he hated them, and how hard it is to hear people talk so fondly about him. Next story. Am I the a-hole for making my sister leave after finding out what she was doing to my pregnant wife and kid? So, my sister is now divorcing her husband and she's staying with me while everything is finalized. Without getting too deep, my sister did have a miscarriage a few months ago. I talked to my wife before this and I told my sister that I could find her somewhere else to stay if my wife being pregnant is going to be difficult to be around. She's been staying with us in the guest bedroom since then. My wife has lately been hyper fixated on the baby's health. At first, I just thought that she was thinking about my sister and did my best to ease the concerns. Then I came home, my wife was in the living room crying and she looked really stressed. She told me that she was fine and just stressed out. I didn't buy it. Eventually, she confessed what was really bugging her. My sister was pretty much trying to turn into a parent to our kid. Apparently, throughout this time, she was calling herself mom to our kid. When our kid would need a diaper change, she would do it and get mad if my wife did it. When it was breastfeeding time, she would get upset, cry or get mad at my wife. 
even ask her to formula feed so it's easier for everyone. She did more things, but you get what I'm saying. So the reason my wife was so fixated on miscarriages was because my sister was apparently berating her with things about miscarriage. Example, why are you eating that? That kills your baby. She had yogurt? No, don't do that. Don't you know that causes a miscarriage? She accused my wife of wanting a miscarriage because she was doing everything wrong or everything that causes miscarriage. The last straw was the day when she tried to tell my wife to also breastfeed a baby, then insult her when she said no. I ask how I never heard this, because while I do work late, she breastfeeds while I'm here. She said that she would do it when I'm not around, but when I left, it would start back up again. I sat down with my sister and told her that I'd be happy to get her a rental, hotel, so forth, and I support her in this. But she can't stay here, as I can't in good conscience let this affect people who are also going through hard times. She started pleading with me, saying she would never do it again. I told her that I'll keep helping her with whatever she needs. I suggested intensive therapy or professional help, but she got mad at me, so I said she needs to leave. She was yelling at me, but in the end left to a hotel, but my whole family has my butt for this. Saying I will never understand a miscarriage and this is a normal behavior, and that she will never forgive me for being so mean. I'll pay to help her, emotional support, but my wife and kids didn't sign up for this. It is my fault to think that someone who went through that could be in front of that, but would I not even more of one be if I let her stay? Not today, home. As someone who's been through a miscarriage, it is not normal behavior. This requires mental evaluation. You are protecting your wife and your child from someone who has become unhinged. Or she already was, and she just took a while to let you realize her cheese had slid off her cracker. Never apologize for protecting your nuclear family, wife and kids, from crazy extended family no matter the shape they take or the crazy lunacy they present. This is normal behavior. No. Absolutely not. And she will never forgive me for being so mean. And if her nagging and stressing out your wife caused her to miscarry, would you be able to forgive her? She's jealous of your wife. She needs serious help. As for the peanut gallery, the minute one of them asks you to take her back, hit them with, if you care so much, do it yourself. Shuts them up real quick. Not day home. Yep, and she's using her brother as her surrogate husband. No contact. Not today, home. Your sister is severely mentally ill. No sound person behaves like this when they've had a miscarriage. The fact that she tried to claim motherhood over your son is a very alarming sign that she is, in fact, a danger to your wife and child. Please take what I'm saying seriously. There are countless cases where women who become mentally unwell after a miscarriage, slash being unable to have a child of their own, become psychotic and unalived expectant mothers for their unborn child or kidnapped children. If I were you, I would notify all family and daycare that your sister is not permitted around your wife and child, and that it will stay that way until your sister gets professional help and becomes mentally sound. And yet his sister was sound-minded enough not to display this behavior in front of Opie. She knew what she was doing was wrong. Next story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to help someone until they take a paternity test? My brother Drew unfortunately passed away a month ago. Drew was an addict since his late teens and was engaging in all sorts of destructive things, and it tore our family apart. We tried rehab, therapy, support groups, and interventions, but nothing was working. He eventually died of an overdose. A week ago, a girl, Zara, got in touch with my parents online claiming to be pregnant with Drew's baby. My parents got too overwhelmed to talk to her, so I messaged her from my own account to continue the conversation. I already recognized Zara. She was Drew's ex-girlfriend from high school. Zara said she just found out she was around 10 weeks pregnant and that she was really struggling for money and could become homeless very soon and asked if me or my parents could help her out. After doing my research, I told Zara that she needs to do a paternity test first. Even though Drew is gone, the test can be done with our dad's DNA. I even said I'd pay for the paternity test. Zara got offended and upset and said she thinks I'm horrid for calling her a liar. She sent me a voice message of her crying, which I thought was a bit out of the blue. I told Zara she can either take the test or not, but we aren't giving her any financial help until she takes the test. Zara left me on read. I told some of my friends about the situation and they think I could have been more understanding and kind to Zara. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. A woman, out of the blue, 
contacts your traumatized and grieving parents and says she is carrying your late brother's child and wants you to send her money and gets all kinds of angry and manipulative when you won't just pony up no questions ask. No. No. You were plenty understanding and kind to offer to pay for a paternity test. Added to add, you don't even know for sure that she's pregnant. Just that she wants money and is going to send recordings of her crying if she doesn't get it. You don't even know for sure that she's pregnant. Just that she wants money. That was my first thought. If your brother was an addict, it's likely the people he associated with were addicts. And addicts are going to addict. Meaning, they'll do slash say anything to secure their next fix. That includes lying about being pregnant with a dead man's baby in hopes the parents will blindly send money in their grief. It's possible this girl is 100% clean and being honest. They might have had just a couple no-strings-attached hookups given their prior relationship. But it is not even a little unreasonable for Opie and her parents to request proof. I myself am a recovering addict, and these were my thoughts too. Not day home. Generally, a refusal to take a paternity test made with crying and accusations of calling the other person a liar means that the test will come out negative. If this is really your brother's child, Zara should have no problem submitting to the test. Okay, I agree with NTA verdict, but saying that if it's really Opie's brother's child then Zara should have no problem submitting to the test reads a lot like people who haven't done anything wrong have nothing to worry about from the police. Zara's perfectly within her rights to say no to the test. She is not within her rights to cry and be manipulative when Opie says no test equals no financial help, which is Opie's right to do. She's an ex-girlfriend from high school, not his partner at the time he died. If she has nothing to hide, she wouldn't have a problem doing a paternity test. Your analogy is not the same. End-stage addicts typically only have addicts in their lives. This is a common addict scam. Last story. Am I the a-hole for throwing out my stepsister after her foster child's behavior? I, 30 female, invited my dad to visit me and my husband for a week as we live abroad. He brought his wife, who asked if her daughter Linda could come as well. I don't know Linda very well, as our parents got together when we were already adult. But she's always seemed fine as does her husband James, so I said okay. Linda notified us that she would be bringing her foster child. Let's call her Sophie, 12 female. I didn't think this would be a problem, but I was wrong. Sophie was incredibly hyper from the minute she stepped in the house. She would interrupt conversations and demand attention. Linda did nothing about her behavior. The first few days were long and arduous, with Sophie complaining about every activity and meal without fail and dictating the running order of everything. Because if she didn't get her own way, she would have tantrums like a toddler and swear like a sailor. She also damaged some art supplies I let her borrow to paint with and damaged the desk in my husband's study. We were all fed up, but felt sorry enough for Linda and James having to put up with it all the time that we didn't say anything. She also developed what I consider an inappropriate and weird fixation with my husband. She would demand to sit next to him at restaurants or at home, ask to hold his hand when crossing roads, and just generally latched onto him. At one point, she even tried to sit on his lap. The final straw was when we were all eating dinner at my apartment before me, my husband, James and Linda were going out for the evening and the parents would watch Sophie. Sophie was whining that she wasn't allowed to come, and Linda said it was an adult's only evening. Sophie finished her food and left the table, and two minutes later, we hear something smash. We all rushed to the lounge to see that a very expensive ornament has smashed on the floor, and Sophie is standing there looking smug. She said it was an accident, but none of us believed her. Linda offered to pay for the damage until she found out the cost and had a decency to be mortified and apologetic. But I had had it. I told her to pack up the kid and go. She might be committed to this, but I didn't commit to property damage and having my life run by a child. Linda and James pleaded that Sophie was just feeling upset and insecure, but I'd had enough of cutting slack of everyone involved. Eventually, they left to stay in a hotel. My dad's wife was beside herself and said I should have had more compassion for what Sophie's going through, meeting new people and traveling for the first time, etc., and maybe some of her attitude can be explained by that. It's not a majority. And while my dad is on my side about not wanting her around, he said it was a bit much to throw them out immediately. But I don't see why I should have to put up with the destruction in my own home and foot the bill for the privilege. What was the kid going to destroy next? Am I missing something here? Am I the a-hole? Okay, first of all, the thing with your husband. That's how men get accused of stuff when they refuse the child's attentions. That's a major concern already. 
Secondly, a lot of foster children are really messed up by broken system, and behavioral disorders aren't uncommon. However, that is no reason anyone who did not consent to fostering the child should have to suffer the consequences of the behavior. Having your stuff damaged because you didn't give her her way is not acceptable. It's also concerning that her foster parents are not trying to correct or redirect their behavior. That is only going to cause the behaviors to escalate as she tests limits. Long story short, you do not have to endure a child with unmanaged behavioral issues who is destructive and possibly acts out in an adult manner towards your husband. Not a whole. Honestly, that's what I started to worry about when I saw how vindictive she could be. My husband can't stand kids. He didn't even really speak to her, so we were absolutely baffled why she liked him. But it's better to be safe than sorry. Not today, Hull. The girl's behavior toward your husband could be an indication that she was somehow victimized in her earlier years. This was not a normal behavior. I would urge your father and stepmother to push to get the girl into therapy if she's not in it already. It's unfortunate that she may have been victimized, but her behavior shows how vindictive she is. She could have said her husband got inappropriate with her and blow up their life. I hope he's nicer than me. They would have been told to get a hotel during the first tantrum.